Your lies. Why don't I have Mr. Gray dispatch? No, no, uh, no, no. no. It, it has to be somebody who knows Holden. Besides, Ned and I are tired of standing around twiddling our thumbs. So in an hour or so, we're going to take off, and uh, when we get back, we'll either have some answers or we'll have Holden with us. Good morning. Good morning. Well, so early, before nine, there's got to be some logical explanation for this. Well, there is. There's no coffee in my new apartment. <laughs> Besides, I want to find out why you've installed Kitty Fielding poolside. You know why. She's going to set up a meeting with me and her father. And I think I made it clear how I feel about that whole situation. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought that I was running worldwide. I thought I made the decisions around... Uh, was I wrong? And I don't make them based on personal likes or dislikes. Hmm. Could I get that in writing? You might find it amusing. One day. Down the road. <laughs> I'll be in my office. Thanks for the flowers. The red roses for being a good girl. I'm glad that your grandmother liked me. I didn't get a chance to thank you properly last night. You're welcome. Ah, coffee, please. Feel free to help yourself. Accounting is waiting for the receipts from your New York trip. Oh, Thelma, for God's sake. I haven't put them together yet. I'll tell them. <sighs> for some reason, the hotel put your limousine rental on my bill. And I complain, $400 is pretty steep just to go to the Samaritan Hospital in downtown Manhattan. If I have a wife and a family somewhere, well, why haven't they tried to find me? I'll step in, men. This is Mr. Rescott, Jablowski, and Sprague. All new to the ship in Boston. Well, we appreciate this, man, but uh, none of them is my granddaughter. <clears throat> Listen, uh, since we're here, take a look at this photo, will you? Clerk at the Maritime Agency in Boston but that he really was one of you. Wait a minute. I know this guy. Portion brought to you today by Bounty, the quicker picker upper. Are you sure? Well, yeah, at least I think so. How is it you know him? You know, I thought the sound of that name Snyder rang a bell. When the captain here uh, read us that radio message. This is the guy that I bought the car from. Uh, listen, what's sit down. When was that? It was the night we signed on. We were having a beer in a bar down by the docks. And this Snyder guy came in in a real sweat. <laughs> he tried to sell his car to the bartender. Said he needed cash in a real hurry. I told him I'd buy his watch, but... Uh, he said he could pawn that off easy enough. It was his car he was having trouble getting rid of. So he was selling it really cheap, so I bought it. Figured we could get a good price for it over here. You mean the car's on board? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I paid the captain some money so he'd take it on to cargo. You sure it's this man in the photo? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I coughed up the cash, he smiled, took the money, signed over the registration, and took off. That was the last time I saw him. Can we see this car, Captain? Yes. If you'll come with me. I'd like to see the registration. Yeah, that's too. a good thought. Oh, uh, uh, I got that upstairs in my locker, uh, if you need it. 
Get it and bring it to the hold. Yes, sir. That'll be all. Follow me. Hey, what'd you tell him all that for? Hey, wake up. Suppose they searched the ship and found the car. This way, at least it's all legit. What, would you prefer if they, uh, you know, charged us with grand theft auto and who knows, maybe even murder? Hey, what do you think that they're gonna know that you led him to Snyder's car? Oh, look, relax. I got this guy Snyder's signature from his license. All the transfer papers look totally on the level. So tomorrow, we sell the car we, after we get off the ship, then we disappear. That way, we don't have to answer any more questions. All right, now you be a good boy, and we will be gone for just a few days, okay? <laughs> it's going to be fine. I know. I know. You call Hazel if you need anything. Oh, I will. We'll be perfectly fine. Hey, guys, look who just drove in. Hi. Good okay. morning, Julie. Hello. Hello. You're here, Lee. Hi. Well, we stayed over. We just said goodbye to Aaron. What you? about you guys? I just wanted to see if there was any news from Ned and Cal. Well, you would have called me out from the fields if yes, there was. Yes, of course I would. No, there hasn't been, not since they left for the freighter. Do you mind if I stay till you No, hear? no, I don't mind at all. Okay, well, we better take off if we're going to leave work early. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, okay. Now, Mama, you, uh... Oh, goodness, go. you call me if there's any yes. news, all I right? Will. I promise. Oh, okay. oh I just uh -huh. realized. I'm not going to see you again before you get hit. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Congratulations. I wish you the best. Oh, thank you, Caleb. You oh, thank you so much. <laughs> could be there. I, I guess I said just about everything I had to say last night. I uh, can only echo what Caleb has to say. I, I want you to know that I love you. I love, love you, you both very much. You. Very happy oh. for you. Mm, I love you, too. Well, you know, you call me now, okay, all right? I will. Bye. Congratulations, Aaron, bye. Darling. Wait, bye-bye. Okay, we'll see you first, all right? You later, pal. Take care of bye. my little girl now. Bye-bye. <laughs> I guess I should say something. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. We just thought we might have a moment to us. Uh, I just wanted to wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And will you promise me that you'll just give me a little warning before you tell Louie? Oh, truth? of course, of course. But that won't be right away because they'll have a lot to deal with. So. Yeah. And by the way, if you're going to be here, you know, a lot, I think that you should be the one to tell Caleb. Yes, there's a 14-hour difference. I understand that. It is now midnight in Taiwan. Oh, forget it. Forget it. I'll tell you what, I'll call you back when I decide whether or not I'm going to use your airline. Time and tide. They can't possibly get on that freighter at this hour. At midnight? Is it safe? What? Your mood. Is your mood any better? Why? Well, I was hoping to bring my grandmother by and show her your establishment. But not if she's going to be in any danger from the fallout. I like your grandmother. I told you I like your grandmother. I only hope when I'm 82, I'll be as elegant and serene. If not more so. Hmm. I watched the two of you. I watched you with her last night. You've forgiven her, huh? For her part in the years of deception of your childhood, hmm? Well, she's not the one who deceived me the most. But I understand that she did what she thought was best, so how can I have a resentment about that? Mm. Well, parents do usually do what they think is best out of love for their kids. In her case, it would be her grandchild, but um, they make mistakes. I think they should be forgiven. Are you speaking from experience? Oh, of course not. It's just wisdom pouring out of me. Bring your grandmother to the office. I'd love for her to see where you work. I liked her very much. Well, Bring her to my office. There is one other thing. Yeah. Uh, if you're still intent on going after the Fielding International account, I understand. But I won't have anything to do with it. The account, Sir Albert or his daughter. What? Oh, just excuse me. Excuse me. Is there anything else? Have you left out? You don't like this sofa, perhaps, this little settee. Maybe you'd like it over there. You tell me if you want it over there. No, just the fielding account. Or else what? I get a letter of resignation, as I did the evening after the big betrayal with Connor Walsh? We're not talking about Connor. Then we're going to run out of topics of conversation soon, aren't we? Well, I'm we? sorry, but that's how I feel. 
Do you ever consider my feelings in the matter? I always consider your feelings. Do you ever admit your feelings? Excuse me. Yes. Oh, all right, all right, yeah. Darling, brace yourself. Lucinda, I'll only take a moment. Now, I want to tell you, I finally reached my father in New York. I want to tell you about the conversation I had with him. Hello, Scott. He's such an early riser, isn't he? Larry, I can't thank you enough for, for staying the night. Listen, just seeing Carrie perk up this morning was thanks enough. Yeah. Did you sleep at all? <laughs> sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I think I dozed a little. Oh, I'm sorry. You? No. No, not really. It was really strange knowing that Daryl was sleeping in the, in the room right down the hallway. I know. But you know, I have to say, he looked as relieved as you did when Carrie's fever broke this morning. Yeah. Well, <sighs> I just, uh, I checked out of the nursery. Carrie's sleeping. Larry, I want to I wanna thank you for last night. I, it's not necessary. I'll be at the hospital if you need me. Okay, let me walk you out. No, I know the way out. Okay. Thanks. Thank you again, Larry. You can go home now and get some sleep. I, I don't want to. I, I'm really, I'm worried about well, you. Well, don't be. I... Joyce is showing up at 11.30 and I can take a nap. Have responsibilities at Wash. Not so a hell with Wash. I, I, I worked there late last night. I mean, I guess I was just trying to keep my mind off. Things have been going. Daryl, don't. Not now. Franny, everything we went through last night with Carrie. I, I mean, don't you feel like that, that? That brought us closer together. It doesn't change anything. I don't believe that. I think of how, how frightened you were of the idea of Carrie staying overnight with me. I mean, can't you see now that I would never do anything to harm her? I do believe that, Daryl, but still, it doesn't change anything that Just has happened. Please, don't say it, all right? Let me live with a little hope. Hello? Franny, it's Barbara. Please don't hang up. I have nothing to say to you. Then just listen. Somebody's here. I know how you feel about me. But this is the only place that's safe to talk, and he needs to speak to you. Well, of course I'll talk to her, Tom. And I'm worried about you, too, you know. Start thinking about me. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, hi. Hi. How are you doing? She is the picture of health. Oh, uh, I'm about very big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have seen me when I had uh, Katie. I was the size of a barn. <laughs> but you have another month? Yeah. Um, I would like to go to the center to get my things and to say goodbye. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and I'll call you there as soon as um, I know what Dr. Larry has arranged, okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. What's happening? She's homesick, and she wants to have her baby in Montego because oh. it's her home. Well, I can't blame her for that, I guess. No. Anyway, Bianca has um, offered to fly down there with her, and Larry's going to make the reservations. Mm. This must be hard for you, too. Oh, tell me about it. Mm. I'll call Craig and Sierra, make sure they keep an eye on her, okay? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Let's hope Larry remembers to make those reservations. Why wouldn't he? He spent the night at Franny's. Oh. Well, Carrie was sick. Oh. And, and he went over there. And then he came back again. And then Franny called him again. And then he went back again. And that is the last I heard of him. Well, he was there for Carrie. I know that you and everybody else around here thinks I'm paranoid about Franny. <laughs> Last night, he told me that he was very concerned about something that Franny was dealing with. And he wanted to tell me about it, but she didn't want him to, so he didn't. It's probably about something very personal. Well, all I know is how I feel. And, and, 
And when the man that you're in love with, who keeps pressing you to set a wedding date, says something like that, then you've got to be blind or stupid not to read the writing on the wall. And if he's not going to be honest enough to, to admit what's really going on, then I guess it's up to me. Nothing in the glove compartment. Nothing anywhere. Was this broken when you bought the car? Uh, yes. Snyder said that, uh, you know, that happened on his way up from Boston. Well, he had an accident. He sure didn't report it. Well, what makes you say that? There was a whole posse of private investigators on his trail, checking on things like that. Well, uh, well what made you think that he had shipped out to begin with? He used the car phone to call the maritime agency in Boston, and she thought she recognized him. <laughs> Must have been you. Well, you found his car anyway. Next time, I hope you find him. Bet on it. His mother-in-law is private detectives, which are the best in the business. Don't track him down. I damn sure will. You see the transfer registration? Sure. Yeah, that looks like holding the signature, all right. It's his address, right? Yeah. Well, is that it? Yeah, I reckon. Answers one question. Yeah, but it opens up a whole new can of worms. Like, why did he sell the car? And where the hell is he now? Sorry I'm late. I, um, got you something on the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. What is it? Well, open it and find out. Oh. <laughs> wow. Thank you very much. It's nothing fancy. I just thought it was time to replace the one you lost. I'll pay for it. It's a gift. You don't have to. Besides, it'll come out of the grant money. It's paying for your books and clothes and videos. Oh, which reminds me. I brought another surprise for you. Oh, good. Uh, what are these on? Well, they're not educational videos. I thought you needed a break from, uh, you know, studying. So, my father and my brothers, they taped some old movies. You know, mostly gangster films and westerns. If you want, I'll get you a VCR and a TV set, okay? In the meantime, I want you to practice your signature because you're going to need it to sign release forms. Uh, I don't really think that I'm ready for that. Don't worry. You won't have to until you're ready. I'll be back. What did you say the time difference is? Well, Ned said it was about uh, 14 hours. Mm. You know, it was awful good of Ned to go with Cal to Taiwan. <laughs> Ned's a very nice man. Yeah, he is. I just knew he was married, and I didn't understand the circumstances, so I thought that the two of you should... The two of us should stop feeling what we were feeling for each other. Yeah, something like that. I guess you can't stop caring about somebody just because you think you should. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no, you can't. <laughs> Caleb, I really hope the two of you work things out soon, you and Julie. For your own sake, I mean as well as for uh, Angel's sake. Mama, I care a great deal about Angel. And I know she's hurting, but I never meant for that to happen. I know that. I know that. Why does love have to be so complicated? <laughs> oh, if I had the answer to that one, I'll tell you. Well, I suppose if love weren't so complicated, Mr. Ned Simon wouldn't be publishing romance novels and I wouldn't be writing them. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> I wish I could write us all a very happy ending. Just like a, the one I wrote for Journey's End. So do I. I'll get that. Yeah. Hey. Lucinda. Come in. Well, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Lucinda. Such a night I've had. I've been tossing and turning and 
tossing and turning, thinking about Holden. I was in my office, just going crazy. And I need to talk to well, you, Emma. Yes, come. I, I suspect that uh, Cal and Ned, <laughs> they'll phone you first before well, it's me. Well, midnight in Taiwan. I'm yeah. aware of the time difference well, in I, Taiwan. Maybe they won't call us until it's morning there. I don't know. Definitely yeah. ready for a nap. She is. Is. Couldn't go to sleep? <laughs> Julie. Well, I didn't expect to see you here. With a little Aaron. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Little Aaron is now big Aaron. He's had his hair cut. Yes, he is. He's staying with us for a while. Yes. John and I have a go away. Aha. Uh -huh. And what about Julie? Julie's here for the same reason that you are, Lucinda. She's waiting on news from Holden. And so are you, aren't you, little buddy? You're waiting on news from your uncle Holden, too. That's why you're not napping, huh? That's why you don't want to nap. Maybe he needs to be... Oh, excuse me. That's too easy. Hello? Oh, Ned. Ned, hello. Are you there? Did they find Holden? Just a minute. Uh... Holden wasn't on the ship. of As the World Turns. Hey. Hey. Listen, I've uh, been thinking about what you said earlier. I really think that you're building more Oh, look, Lila, all I know is how I feel. And how I felt since Larry found out that, that Daryl and Franny had split. The other day I went to see Emily. And there he was, in Kim's backyard, with Franny, and they looked very cozy. She's going through a very bad time right now. And, and Larry is the only one she can turn to? Well, she's surrounded by family. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Okay. How's Carrie? She's going to be all right. Yeah, it's really nice of Larry to come over and take care of her and spend the night like he did. He's a very dedicated doctor. Excuse me, I have to make a call. <clears throat> so did you uh, bring Carrie in? No, I'm, I'm going to make an appointment with Dr. Michaels. Mm -hmm. You know, Lila, it may sound kind of funny, but uh, as scary as this whole thing was for me and Franny, I think it brought us closer together. Good. Keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I was at Tom and Margo's last night. They were acting kind of strange. Is, is, is everything all right over there? Well, I, I think it's just the aftermath of what everything happened. Hey, I understand. Congratulations are in order. Oh. Well, yeah, if we ever get out of here, they yeah. are. Thank well, you. Thank well, you. don't let anything stand in your way. Be happy, okay? Well, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Yeah, okay. Lila, any news from Cal? Well, no, not since he called to say that he and Ned were on their way to the freighter. Edna, my chief of staff, just walked in. I, I am. I'm going to ask him right now. I got to go. Uh, I'll call you back later. Thank you. Hi. Sorry about last night. <laughs> I have to get my coffee. Why didn't you call? I didn't when you knew you were going to spend the night? Okay. I didn't want to wake you up. I didn't want to wake up Inez, for that matter. Look, I was just there to take care of Carrie. Okay? Now, can we please talk about something else like reserving the hospital chapel? Did you make the travel reservations for Bianca and Inez? I forgot. I forgot. Whoops. Well, I think that's me. Hi, this is Iva Snyder. Oh, yes, yes, put her on. Yeah. Hi, Mama. Yeah, is there any news? Yeah. All right. Wait a minute. Hang on. Let me tell John. Holden wasn't on the freighter. Darling. Sweetheart, it's wonderful that you've got a friend in Inez. But you can't go back to Montego right now. School term is just starting anyway. I need you. I need you. You've got to be my stalwart with Lily when she gets back from Zurich. We've had bad news about Holden. 
What? He wasn't on the freighter, as we all thought. Here are those files you requested? Uh, Julie, I'm busy oh, right this now. Okay, so just take a minute, Lucinda. Excuse me, Bianca. Sweetheart, please, would you get on the phone? Talk to Inez, talk, uh, Dr. Stewart, whoever, just say that you can't go, and then come back, please, because we have to talk. We're not finished. Well? I saw your face when Emma got the news about Holden. You never once believed for a minute that he was on that freighter, did you? My detectives are the best oh, just that cut money the can crap, buy. Lucinda. You only said that story to Lily and the Snyders to buy my silence about seeing Holden in New York. You didn't want them to know that he left because he found out the truth about Aaron, not because he was mad at Lily. As you make your exit through that door, be reminded of this, that now it is not only Lily's happiness that is at stake, it's yours as well. You know how the Snyders prize honesty. How can you have a future with Caleb when he finds out that the one night stand you had with his brother produced a bouncing baby boy? A, a boy that you've lied about endlessly, a little boy who's being raised right now by Caleb's own sister in the tangled web of deception that you have created. Think about that. Think about it. Yes, Hutch, I will. If I hear anything at all, I will let you know, and I hope your dad has a safe recovery, too. Okay, bye-bye. You know, since Tess has money, I'm pretty sure she's not going to show up in Alba until she runs out. I still don't like the idea of her out there on her own, though, especially if she's hurting. I remember when I was hurting like that. I thought I'd lost you forever. I went off to Rome. You know, I'm glad that Franny knows the truth about your night there with Daryl. Oh. It's got to be Franny. Oh, okay. Hey, right Blue Eyes. You know, you're growing up to be quite a little lady. Just about as pretty as your ma, too. Two years old soon, huh? Huh? Well, I hope I can be there to help you blow out the candles. I'll take you, Punky. Come on, let's go. Let's go upstairs. I will uh, get rid of whoever it is. Thank you. I was at... Uh, Tom and Margo's last night. I heard about Carrie. Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. So. Daryl was there. He spent the night. He was so loving and concerned. Daryl, this really isn't a very good time. Okay, I know. I was just saying, Jennifer, you will get cuter every time I see you. Daryl, really? I just wanted to stop by for a second. Franny, you're the last person I expected to see here. I, um, I just decided that I should hear Barbara out. Good. Good. Because if we're guilty of anything, it was just... We wanted to protect you from getting hurt. So you keep saying? Because it's true. I, I guess I'll, uh, I'll let you talk. I, I'd like to ask you a favor first. What? Well, I've got a meeting today scheduled for 2.15 with Dr. Michaels. I was wondering if you felt up to a joint session. Fine, I'll be there. Great, great. All right, I'm, I'll, I'll run along. Uh, I'll see you at 2.15. Okay. I wish you would let me explain. I don't think you can explain, Barbara. Well, I guess I'll go get Hal. It's okay, I heard him leave. Thanks for covering a good job. I'll let you two talk. <clears throat> so, anything new about Daryl's connection with the Harpers? Sorry, no, but listen. 
From what the Harpers tell me, Gavin's now being kept in a special security area of the federal pen since his overdose. He can't have any visitors there. But I still want you to go see him. So stay in touch with Tom. Find out when that's possible. I'm sure that he's just going to tell me that Daryl is Jennifer's father. Well, maybe. But while you're there, I want you to tell him that you are not going to believe any of his accusations against Daryl unless he can give you some kind of proof. But if he can do that, you will use your connections with your brother of the DA and get the case reopened. Okay. It's a little trap that I'm baiting for Gavin and that should get his jets firing if anything does because it's his only hope of getting out of prison now. You ever find out where Daryl went after his meeting with Anthony Harper in Chicago? Yeah, he said that he went to Des Moines, but I called Charles to talk about the whole Candace thing, and they said that he was away on some kind of trip in Europe. Now, if Daryl went to Des Moines, wouldn't he know about that trip? I thought Daryl didn't want you checking out his story with Charles. Changed his mind. I see, when Charles wasn't there to receive your call. Exactly. So no one who can confirm what Daryl told you about Candace can be reached? It's got to be tough. You should have seen him, Al. He was... He was so wonderful. With Gary last night. Yeah, but Franny, if any of Gavin's accusations are true, then Daryl is a man with two completely separate personalities. And that makes him dangerous. No, they'll pick the tickets up at the airport. Okay, thanks. Hi, Dr. Stewart. Oh, Bianca, I, I just made uh, reservations for you and Inez. Oh, I'm, I'm What's sorry, the I, I can't go to Montego. My mother doesn't want me to go. Oh, I know. Yeah, um... Oh, well, well, it's I'll, okay. Well, I'll call Craig and Sierra, and I'll ask them to meet Inez. No, that's plan. not necessary. Um, Lila offered. Does Inez know? No. I, I wanted to tell you first. Oh, I see. Well, thanks. Um, yeah. Well, come on, we'll, we'll go call. Okay. Well, Cal sounded very disappointed. On well, I know, I know, we're all disappointed, but we're also very grateful to Ned and Cal for going all that way. Yeah. I'm you know, a, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Could I speak to you for a moment? Sure. Excuse me. <clears throat> Listen, you're Susan's best friend. Mm -hmm. Would you please try and speak to her? Because I don't seem to be able to get through to her. Sure. But tell me one thing. Did you have to spend the entire night at the It was a uh, here you well, are. Dr. Professional. Giardella is waiting for you. You know that? Okay. I'll walk you. Yeah. All right, I'll walk all right. You. yes, yes. All right, thank you. Okay, okay. you ready? Let's go, okay. let's go. Okay. Come on, come on. Oh, John, John, have you got a second? No. No, yeah, but please, just okay, one okay. second. Okay, okay, just one second. One <sighs> second, come on. I know this is lousy timing, but I, I need a few days off. It's lousy timing. I'll see if I can get you a couple of days when I get back, okay? Uh, uh, John, I need a leave of absence. What's up? Talk to me. Well, you know my record. I'm talking about my record with alcohol and pills. And, uh, I, I, I don't know. Everything is just coming down on me all at once. And I, I talked to my AA sponsor. I haven't taken a drink, but I'm not handling things very well. And we both know where that can lead. Well, Buzz just got us clear for takeoff. I really thought we'd have holding on this jet. Yeah, me too. Really? You know, I, I, it's hard enough to understand him selling his car and pawning his watch, but why would he pawn his wedding ring? You know him a whole lot better than I do. Would he really do this? Take off after a fight with his wife? What, well, drive across the country and disappear without a word? No, sir, no way. I'm telling you, that boy's in love with Lily. That's why he bottled up all the emotion he had when they lost the baby. That's why he took all that abuse from Lucinda. No, none of this makes sense. The only explanation is that something's happened to him. So, why did he sell his car? And why did he never get back to Lily after he left that message for her? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. I intend to find out. I bet Lucinda didn't even tell her detectives the latest about Holden. Now, why wouldn't she? I don't know. It's just very fishy that she sends Lily out of the country at the exact same time that Ned is cabling the freighter, and her detectives have Ned and Cal on a wild goose chase all the way to Taiwan. Caleb, she wouldn't do that deliberately. I mean, after all, our detectives, we, they, they did find Holden's car. Yeah, Lucinda has always been threatened by Holden. She'd do anything to keep him and Lily apart. I don't... 
want to dredge up the past. Her detectives did give us a lead that resulted in finding Holden's car. No, now, I need... I want to believe that her detectives are going to find Holden soon. And bring him home to us. How's your sandwich? It's good. You okay? Just thinking about what you said earlier about being released. You know, Dr. Sussman wanted to talk to you about a part time job, either here or in his office. Could provide a little income. What's wrong, Aaron? This is the only home that I know. I know. You have to trust me. We are not going to release you until you are ready, and that is not going to happen tomorrow. Can you hear that? No. <laughs> then turn it up. Or turn it off. Hello? It's me. You got back to Chicago all right? Yeah, and they seem to accept my excuse why I was late. So. I worry so much. Look, I got to thinking on the trip back about what you told me about Anthony and Vicky being at the Mona Lisa. She used to be one of your biggest customers. Is she still buying up everything at Fashions? Well, I've been gone so much, I don't really know. I'll have to check with Lisa, but I don't think she's bought any of my designs in quite some time. A little strange, don't you think? Considering she still spends so much time in Oakdale working with Daryl. Gotta go. Hey, I thought the doctor told you to get some sleep. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's Daryl. I'm meeting Daryl. We're uh, we're trying yet another joint session with Doctor Michaels. Mm. Larry, I. I can't thank you enough for everything that you did for Carrie last night. I told you, no thanks are necessary. Hey, staying overnight was above and beyond the call of duty, and you know it. It's the least I could do for somebody who loves their child as much as you do. It meant a lot. Thank you. Hey, I have to find Susan. Go, uh, go. Get have out a of good here. session with hey, Dr. Michaels. I will. Oh, Larry, uh, this was left for you at the nurse's station. It's from Susan. Larry, what is it? What's wrong? I was just leaving you a note. Ah? Uh? Yes, my grandmother's going to be coming by after lunch for that tour. Oh, fine, fine. Two in one day. Yes, I've just seen the whole marvelous operation. Father's going to be so impressed. <sighs> oh, and when is Sir Albert expected? Uh, when he finishes his business in New York. These came while you were out. Thank you. One is from Lily. Uh, uh, Kitty, why don't you repair to the executive dining room? You know where it is I now. do. <laughs> and um, I'll join you shortly for some lunch. Order a drink. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Goodbye. What did she want? Oh, uh, she wanted to know if there was any news about Holden. All right, now the first thing we're going to do when we get back, is move you and Aaron upstairs to the penthouse. And then we can start to look for a place in the country. I'm sorry. Disappointing news about home. Yeah, I know. It just would have been a wonderful wedding present to know that he was home and back with Lily. By the time this little person makes his or her appearance, Holden will be back. He's going to be part of the welcome committee. If he ever, forgi if he ever forgives me once he learns the truth... Oh, come on. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. 
But now we only have our marriage to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get it. Well, <laughs> oh, John? for crap. Iva, I tried to call you at the hospital, but they said you'd already left. This is a very bad yeah. time, you see. We're just about to leave. We're yeah, getting married, you know. I have news about Holden. Well, Mama already called. No, not about the frame. Julie, what is it? First, you have to promise me that you won't say anything to Caleb. Now, wait a minute. You tell us what you've got. No, then we'll no, talk no, about promises. I've got to have your promise. It's your call. What do you want to do? Uh, all right, all right. You have our promise. What is it? Holden came to see me in New York right after he had that fight with Willie. This portion of As the World Turns has been brought to you by Duncan Hines, helping you bake your moist, delicious best. Men's Accessories by Swank Incorporated. This is Dan Region, inviting you to join us again Monday for As the World Turns.